Early this morning, the White House announced they had secured the release of a woman named Brittany Griner, an LGBTQ WNBA star that the administration had been working feverishly to free from Russia. It is a happy ending for a woman who's been through hell for the past nine months, no doubt about that. Now, Greiner was not the only American being held prisoner unjustly by the Russians, of course, but she was by far the most politically useful. And to get her back and have a press conference announcing that Joe Biden saved an African-American member of the LGBTQ community, plush with dramatic pictures like, say, this one of Biden embracing Griner's wife, the political value was there. It was worth embarrassing the nation again on foreign policy. And that's exactly what happened. Russia basically just kidnapped an American athlete for bringing vape cartridges into their country and managed to trade her for one of the most dangerous people on the planet. And our spineless administration, of course, was happy to oblige. The press secretary actually got defensive today when pushed on why Russia so clearly manhandled the United States in this negotiation. They continue to treat Paul Whelan differently given the nature of the total, totally illegitimate charges they have levied against Paul. Unfortunately, the choice became to either bring Brittany home or no one. So that basically was the line. There was no choice. No serious American president would ever agree to a deal like this. I think we all know that. Russia's merchant of death, Victor Boot, the notorious arms dealer who was convicted of conspiracy to kill U.S. citizens and officials, delivery of anti-aircraft missiles, and providing aid to a terrorist organization that seek to kill American troops in Colombia. Here's how 60 Minutes described Victor Boot back in 2010. Victor Boot, uh, in, in my eyes, um, is one of the most dangerous men on the face of the earth. On the face of the earth. Without a doubt. Oh, okay. He's free again. So that man was traded for a national anthem protesting basketball player who likes to vape. If you're surprised, just remember this is really just Obama's third term. And remember in 2014, Obama and Biden swapped five Taliban prisoners for deserter army soldier Bo Bergdahl, whose selfish act of desertion cost the lives of six soldiers who were looking for him. Four of the five terrorists that Obama gave away for a deserter are now a part of the new Taliban terrorist government that's ruling Afghanistan. As far as the Griner case, of course Biden got manhandled on this. Putin realized the bargaining chip that he had holding a lesbian of color dealing with a desperately woke administration. He had the best possible target you could ask for. What a chip. America's reputation on the world stage, of course, does not matter nearly as much as Biden's support among the marginalized communities that he's always pandering to here domestically. And that pandering, of course, has not gone unnoticed. One of the best players in the NFL, a guy named Micah Parsons of the Dallas Cowboys, responded to the White House gloating about the prisoner swap this morning with, we still not voting for you, aimed right at Joe Biden. Parsons was quickly harassed for thinking for himself and not subscribing to liberal indoctrination and actually quickly deleted that post and then went on to apologize, likely after a panicked call from his agent, I would think. No free thinking allowed in the NFL, as we all know. But many, though, like Micah Parsons, also noticed who was left behind in this deal. Paul Whelan, a former Marine who was arrested in Russia four years ago with $80,000 in cash and accused of being an American spy, Whelan yet again missed the boat. Not as much political capital, of course, in saving a guy who looks like this. The Biden White House has been quick to say that these cases are very different. Whelan is an alleged to be a spy. Griner was just an athlete caught with drugs. Okay, fine. But then what about Mark Fogel? You probably haven't heard this name, have seen that face. An American teacher imprisoned for medical marijuana in his luggage. So like the exact same thing as Brittany Griner. Fogel received an even harsher sentence than Griner. 14 years in max security Russian prison. Can you imagine? Oddly, the Biden State Department doesn't even list Fogel as wrongly detained. They almost never talk about him. It makes you wonder 
if this administration would have even acknowledged Griner's situation if she wasn't, again, so diverse and politically useful? And the answer is probably no. And it's clear to see why. The story being about Brittany Griner, of course, has elicited an absolute outpouring of joy from all the usual suspects who are only capable of seeing people based on their gender, race, and ideology. Check out Don Lemon's reaction over at CNN this morning. I think I would be remiss if we did not mention also the importance this plays for the LGBTQ community. Yes, sir. As we've been talking about black women, this is big. So this is for the LGBTQ community. Glad releasing a statement, obviously, just I'm summarizing here that they're happy and it shows the, the um, struggles and the danger that members of the LGBT community face around the world. <laughs> Glad tweeting out, by the way, breaking Russia has freed Brittany Griner. Her long-awaited release is a relief for her wife, teammates, fans, and all the LGBTQ community who recognize the extreme danger she faced as an out gay black woman detained in Putin's Russia. So just so you know, this story has absolutely nothing to do with Griner's race or sexual orientation. It has nothing to do with that whatsoever. This is just another story taking place in the real world where who you sleep with and what you look like doesn't matter. But that world doesn't exist inside of the media bubble. It's utterly ridiculous to make the equation that's being made, so of course they all are, because mainstream America is now utterly ridiculous. Teachers Union head Randy Weingarten, again, I'm sorry to show this woman, but she tweeted out, what a great relief, extraordinary news, a basketball star, but also a gay black woman is released. And then basically in parenthesis, and yes, of course, we also want other prisoners like uh, Paul Whelan released as well. You get the picture. Speaking of utterly ridiculous, The View this morning, I think, wins the prize, starting with Sonny Hostin, who usually is the worst of the worst, who says that Brittany Griner being detained in Russia is yet another reason why women's basketball players need to be paid more money, even though, as we all know, nobody watches women's basketball. I think it highlights why our women need to be paid their value in sports, because that's why she was over there in the first place. Just food for thought, anybody, you know, WNBA, it's fine, nothing wrong with it, but it does on its own lose about $10 million a year. It costs about $70 million to run it. They bring in about $60 million in revenue, and that's even with all the free goodies they get from the NBA as far as equipment and materials. Uh, it limps along, though, thanks to a generous $15 million annual gift that is forced uh, from the NBA, by the way. Whoopi Goldberg jumped in after Sonny Hostin to show her support for that other guy, Paul Whelan. Take a listen. They are working on, yeah. on Paul. Yeah. And it's so unfair. And he's been there a long time. Yeah. We're not going to let that go. We're not going to forget. We're going to remind Americans every day that he's there and that he needs to we come must. back. You heard it there first. On The View, they're going to talk about Paul Whelan every single day until he gets released. Why? Well, obviously they're not going to do it. But they're going to pretend they're going to do it because they, just like everybody, realize that Paul Whelan just got the worst deal ever. And that Biden just made a really, really political choice based on virtue signaling to pull somebody out years after Paul Whelan went into prison in Russia.